All right, this is going to be the last section in chapter seven that we're going to cover. I am not doing this in great detail, so this is not going to be all of the different types of problems in 7.5, uh, but it's just going to be just like kind of a little bit of kind of the highlights. Again, I'm just trying to zip through chapter seven as quickly as we can. All right, so let's just dive in. These are going to be word problems that are going to involve setting up and solving proportions or, you know, maybe some equations that are involving some proportions. So if it takes 10 hours to drive 720 miles at this rate, meaning at the same speed, how long will it take to drive 300 miles? So we're going to set up a proportion here of 10 hours. Now you don't have to do it this way. If you can do some division and figure it out on your own, that's awesome. Okay. That's awesome. You can do it however you want. I'm just kind of going to show you a systematic way of doing it. So I set it up as hours divided by miles. So 10 hours takes you 720 miles. So how many hours takes you 300 miles? Then we know this is a proportion because it's fraction equals fractions. So we're going to cross multiply. So I get 300 times 10 is 3000. And then 720 times X is 720 X. Divide both sides by 720. divided by 720 is 4.16 hours or remember this little toggle key here if you hit that that's 25 over 6 hours so a little over four hours make sure that your answers make sense you know with these kind of word problems make sure that your answers make sense you know if you do this and you get something like say 416 hours good lord it's not that far, 300 miles. I mean, that's, I don't know, what's 300 miles from here? That's like what, Springfield or something? Yeah, you know, Springfield, maybe something close to St. Louis. So, I mean, it wouldn't take you 416 hours to get there. I mean, maybe if you crawled. So just make sure your answers make sense. And if you have to guess, you know, if you're doing these like on the final and you just have to flat out guess, you have no clue what you're doing, try to make a nice educated guess. You know, just try to be like, mm, kind of seems like it might be this. Because sometimes we throw crap answers at you just to see if, you know, you'll believe them. You know, because sometimes, you know, you do something wrong and you're like, yeah, 416 hours. That's what the calculator said. It must be right. All right. It's not. Okay. Another type of proportion is what's called a scale problem. So on a map, a half of an inch measures three miles. Not always, but on a particular map. So how many miles apart are two cities that are two and a half inches apart on the map? I can set up a proportion. Again, you don't have to do it this way. If you guys can figure it out another way, there's plenty of other ways you can do this. Okay. But if you want to set up a proportion, I set it up as inches on the top, miles on the bottom. So one half is to three as two and a half is to what? So half an inch is three miles. Two and a half inches is how many miles? Notice the order. So I'm writing this order over here. You don't want to put X over two and a half. The order is very important. The order has to stay the same for both fractions in order for that proportion to be equal. Once I get that set up, then I can cross multiply. I get one half X is equal to three times two and a half. You can use your calculator to do that one if you don't know what that's going to be. So three times two and a half. Notice I'm just doing 2.5. So see, I just changed them to decimals. 0.5 and three times 2.5. So I got 7.5. That's the three times 2.5. And then if I divide both sides by 0.5, I get x equals 15 miles. If you got this a different way, that's awesome. Okay. If you looked at it and said, well, each half an inch is a three miles, so how many one half inches are these? And you're like, oh, well, that's five one half inch segments. So five times three is 15. If you got it that way, that's awesome. If you have no idea what I just said, forget it ever happened. So, all right. Sales tax. We can do a sales tax problem by also setting up a proportion. Okay? If sales tax is three cents on the dollar, then how much is an item that has 72 cent sales tax? Again, we need to make sure our proportion, the order stays the same. 
So I did cents over dollars. Three cents per one dollar, 72 cents X dollars. This is an important component to make sure that you have the order the same. You cannot just willy-nilly just slap down some fractions. The order has to be the same. Now, if you did dollars over cents and you got one over three and X over 72, their cross products would be the same as what I'm about to get. The order has to be the same. So I cross multiply and I get 3X equals 72 times one. Divide both sides by three because that is multiplication right there. Okay. My light just went out. Oh crap. What? Come on. Nope, okay, no, we'll make it work without it. So, oh, because I got a low battery, that's why. All right, so when you divide both sides by three, you get $24. So that seems, you know, reasonable. If it's three cents on a dollar, 72 cents is, you know, $24 seems reasonable. All right, next one, also a proportion. On a zoo trip, the ratio of adults to children is six to 15. Remember a ratio is just um, a fraction. Okay, so remember this is just going to be a fraction, 6 over 15. There's 273 people attending. How many are adults? So once again, we have this whole make sure that my fraction stays in the correct order. Adults over children. So adults, children. Now here, you know there's 273 people total. So if this is the number of adults, the kids must be the rest of the 273. So that's why I did the 273 minus X. So I said if X is the adults, then the children must be the total minus how many adults there are. So I know that's kind of, you know, an odd thing to have to do. But that's a common way that you would do it if you were given a total. Then we just have to cross multiply. We'll have to distribute that six. And we get this 1638 minus six X. I'm going to get these X's on the same side. So I'm going to move this six X over here because otherwise I would have to move the 15 X over here and then the 1638 over. It doesn't matter as long as your variables are on one side and then your constants are on the other. And so we get 21 X equals 1638. And then if you divide, that's 1638 divided by 21. So we get 78 adults. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. What number must be added to both the numerator and denominator of 16 over 21 to make the resulting fraction equal to 5 6. This sounds like it's going to be terrible, but it's not. So this is my setup. I'm looking to add the same number to the top and bottom. Now remember, this doesn't cancel because of that plus in between there. So I'm just going to have to cross multiply. And we did some of these in the last section. We're going to have to do some distributing because I get the 6 times 16 plus X and the 5 times 21 plus X. So now that we've at this point, pause and see if you can distribute this. Okay, so when I distribute this out, here's what I get. I'm going to move all the X's to one side, the constants to the other, and then I'm going to divide. I don't have to get this equal to zero because it doesn't have a squared to it. So subtracting that 5X, I get 96. That's a 1X, 105. I'm going to subtract 96 from both sides, and I get 1x equals 9. I don't have to divide by 1 because I'm just going to get 9 out of it. So 9 is the number that I have to add to both of these. So like I said, I'm trying to do um, just like some, just kind of a variety. Let's see, is this the last one? It is the last one, I think. Yep, this is the last one. I'm just trying to do a bunch of different problems so that you guys can see just a whole variation of these without having to go into the detail of all of them. We're just kind of doing 
just enough. That's kind of the theme of chapter seven, just enough. All right, last example. One number is a third of a number. Their sum is 980. Find the numbers. All right. One number is one third of another. So do you see that? One number is equals one third of another number. See that of is that multiply. Their sum, that means add, is 980. So here's what I did. I said, hey, one is one third of another. Their sum is 980. So I said, hey, if this is X, because that's equal to X, I took all of this stuff right here, because look, it's equal to X. And I replaced that X right there, because it's the same X and Y. I replaced it so that I get an equation that has just Y's in it. This, the Y's are both on the top. So I get one third Y plus Y equals 980. Now, these are like terms. So I'm going to add one third plus one, so you can get your calculator out. One third plus one is four thirds. So I get four thirds y equals 980, and then I just need to divide both sides by four thirds. So this is 980 divided by four thirds, because remember this fraction bar means division. So we do 980 divided by four thirds. Let's make sure you guys can see that. So we get 735. Now it says find the numbers. So I need both numbers. So Y is 735. Now look, come back up here. X is a third of Y. So X is a third of what? Of 735. All right, just get the calculator out. Take one third times, that's one third of 735, and that gives me 245. So this is where I got that from. So just in case you're wondering where that stuff came from. So there's my two numbers. All right. There's your fast and furious um, zip through section seven five. I know there was a lot of stuff coming at you, um, a lot of different types of problems. I hope some of them uh, look somewhat familiar with the proportions and stuff. Um, I hope it's not too dark since my uh, my light went out since my battery is low. But oh well, stuff happens, right? Okay, so that concludes chapter seven. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, I hope that you get all of the certifications done. Remember, you get to skip seven of them for me. So if you're in my class, you get to skip seven certifications. You do have to do 40 certifications. So don't forget that. And you are going to want to um, make sure you do all those because your grade will drop otherwise. Make sure you keep up with all the quizzes. And then the final is going to be, um, what, like the 12th or something, you know, somewhere during that week. So... All right, email me if you have any questions. Good night.